Welcome to GeoWeek 2023 here in Denver, Colorado. I'm Noah Eckhouse here from Navis, and joining me is James Harbin from JTM Construction, Survey Superintendent. We're gonna ask a few questions. We're gonna find out from one of our uh, more advanced users here, what's going on in his neck of the woods. So James, if you wouldn't mind explaining, how long have you been a customer and um, you know, what, are you, what are you using the Navis VLX for primarily? So we made our initial purchase in November. Um, we're using it for everything we can. A lot of interior use, um, especially in tenant improvement world, trying to work with our architects to um, provide accurate as-builts of the space to um, avoid impacts to schedule and cost during the construction process. Great, so um, obviously JTM Construction, construction's in the name. So you guys are managing a lot of that process. Um, you're overseeing other subs. How are we using this data to sort of bring things together? Uh, I mean, we're using it in a lot of different scopes. Uh, as built for existing mechanical, electrical plumbing. Uh, sometimes it's quantifying what's been installed. Uh, we're using the uh, photos just for photo documentation. Uh, it's an easy navigation tool uh, using Ivion. So uh, a lot of different ways we're trying to implement it and leverage it on our projects. Very cool. So um, I got some inside information that you guys might be scanning concrete. And obviously this is one of those things where uh, we're not gonna go out and say, yes, every concrete job is a VLX job, but if you wouldn't mind talking about um, how you sort of decided that it was gonna be acceptable for your needs and um, how you're using it and if you're controlling it and those sorts of things would be good to talk about. Absolutely. So we're, it's a case basis. Uh, what we found comparing our terrestrial scan data to it, it's, it's within the tolerance of accuracies we need to do our job. Um, a lot of times we're performing floor leveling to try to mitigate cost to owners. So we'll grind down a little bit of the slab, fill a little bit of the slab, and, and kind of come to a happy medium where we're not impacting the engineering side of things. So we're using it there. We're using it on vertical concrete. Um, it, it's just a very fast and effective tool for collecting data. Great. Yeah, that's that's a good perspective to have. Whenever, you know, right tool for the job is always sort of the way we look at it, too. Um, I always have a hard time identifying the weak points. I know we talked about that um, as an opportunity to discover new ways to do things. Um, and something we were talking about was ways to scan vertical loops and things like that. Can you talk a little bit about the, the learning curve of taking the VLX out and being comfortable on site? Absolutely. So um a lot of it's just figuring out what we can work with. Sometimes we're taking over a project that has control on some floors and not on other due to it being destroyed or maybe the previous tenant didn't provide control. And so sometimes rather than going and trying to run a traverse through an entirely framed up building or even an occupied building, we can use control outside of the environment of impact and we can loop our data vertically or horizontally with spaces that don't have it. So the big thing is just making sure we have the coverage to have successful cloud to cloud um, alignment. Very cool. Can you speak a little bit to the sort of deliverables that you're making from VLX data? And are you fusing uh, data from other sensors into it to achieve your goals? Yeah, so we just started uh, bringing in data from other terrestrial scanners we already own. Um, we're bringing the data out as uh, temperature maps, things like that. Uh, we're finding a lot of value in that alone. Sometimes it's just in the photos uh, to be able to send out to an engineer or an architect to show what's in a space. Um, so there's a lot of different ways we're utilizing the data. Sometimes we're going to a mesh and we're using it in our BIM effort, BDC BIM effort. So um, pretty much any way we can utilize the data, we're, we're trying to find new ways to implement. Great. Um, if, we, if you wouldn't mind, I'd be curious to hear about what some of those softwares you're using downstream for generating those heat maps and other reports would be. Absolutely. So I'm using uh, for the meshes, using point views um, for our deliverables with the temperature maps. We're using uh, 3DR as a platform for that. They have a very nice PDF deliverable that I've built out in there um, for our different projects. So that's a lot of what we're using for those deliverables. Very cool. Thank you, James. I appreciate it. Is there any other things that you would want to add that maybe we didn't get to? Things that you just say, I, I like this. I don't like this. We're here for it all. Uh, the speed of the capture. Uh, it's really improved our field capture timeframes. We can get a lot more done in a day with it. Um, the data is clean, it's crisp, the photos are wonderful, and our clients are really liking the uh, navigation in IVM. So, Awesome. Thank you, James. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you.